It's the day of the festival. Of all mornings, I expected this to be the one Satori and I would walk to school together. But he's not answering his phone. I considered going next door to wake him up, but decided that might be too much too fast. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event are nearly complete. The banner Yuki and I made is dry and beautiful. I carefully roll it up and carry it to school with me. He texted me to make sure that I didn't forget, and to remind me of the surprise quote he was going to put on it. I probably feel the same way as Naruki about the literature event. More excited for it to be over so I can take in the rest of the festival with Satori. But knowing Monaco and all the work everyone put into it, I'm sure our event will be great too. Kosakura, you're the first one here. <laughs> Thanks for being early. Really? I thought for sure at least Yuki would be here by now. Monaco is moving through the room, placing little booklets on each of the desks. They must be the ones with all our poems in them. In the end, I found one I thought he might like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Satori with you. Yeah, he overslept again. Same old Satori. You'd think on a day as important as today, he'd try a little harder. I say it without thinking, only remembering everything that happened yesterday after it's already out. Suddenly, I feel horrible, knowing it's not that simple for him. I only said it because it's the way I've always thought about him. But maybe I should have gone to wake him up after all? <laughs> You should really take more responsibility for him, Kosukura. Especially after yesterday. You kind of left him hanging this morning, you know? Yesterday? Monaco, you know about that? Did Satori really tell him about it that quickly? How we're together now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. He didn't even want to talk about our first date yet. Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. Jeez. You probably don't even know the full story, so... So don't... Don't worry, Kozakura. I probably know a lot more than you think. It's just Monaco. Same charm, same smile, same encouraging, authoritative manner. But for some reason, I feel a chill when he says that. Hey, the pamphlets came out really well. Would you like to see them? Sure. I grab one from the stack on his desk and leaf through it. Oh, yeah. They really did. Something like this will definitely help people take us more seriously. I thought the same thing. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page. It looks professional. Monaco and Satori did an excellent job. I recognize Klein from Naruki's practice session as well as the hanging tree from Yuki's. Satori's poem is completely different from the one he practiced. It's one I've never read before. Get out of my head! Get out of my head! Get out of my head before I do head. what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything you said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Kosakura, what's wrong? Um, nothing. I can't imagine Satori would ever write something like this. Not even with my new insight into him. Hey, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Satori right now. Oh, okay. Well, try not to take too long. I need you for the event. Yeah, yeah. I'll be back as soon as I can. Watch where you step. Monaco calls that out after me. I just quicken my pace. What's wrong with me? I should have thought about all this when I came to school this morning. I knew Satori was in a vulnerable state. Hell, it was all I could think about last night. I could have waited for him. I could have gone in and woken him up. He would have loved that. He would have loved the simple but familiar ritual of walking to school with me. Oh, and I promised him things would be the way they always have been. That's all he needs. 
I'll do better in the future. He's not answering the door. I'm not surprised. He didn't answer the flurry of calls and texts I made on the walk over here either. I let myself in. The house is pitch dark and silent, reminding me of Yuki's poem somehow. Satori? Sweetie, are you down here? He isn't. I head up the stairs. Too much too fast or not, he is my boyfriend and I'm worried about him. If he's upset at me waking him up in his room, I'll just have to find a way to make up for it later. Satori, it's me. I hope you're dressed, dummy. I'm coming in. <laughs> he's dressed, so that's okay. Satori. No. I have to look up to get a clear picture. It's dark, but... My eyes have adjusted enough to pick out the rope tied to a ceiling beam. The other end of it is tied to a noose sunken into the flesh of Satori's neck, holding him suspended about two feet from the messy floor. His desk chair is tilted over on its side. The edge of the seat scant inches too low for his bare feet to find purchase on it. Dried blood trails from angry gouges in the sides of his neck to soak into his pajama shirt. It coats his fingertips from nail to knuckle, and thick foam covers his mouth. His face is purple, and his eyes are ringed in vivid red bruises. No! Please! This can't be real! Satori, please, I'm sorry, please come back, I'm here now, please, don't leave me like this, I love you, this is some sort of nightmare, it has to be, Satori wouldn't do this, not my Satori, I walk helplessly forward to take him in my arms, wondering briefly if it isn't too late, if I could maybe save him. There's always a way out of a nightmare after all, even if it's just waking up. He's cold and stiff in my arms, against my face. My sneakers squelch in the puddle he left. That's my wake-up call. This may be a nightmare, but it's all too real. I suppress the urge to vomit. <laughs> Just yesterday, I held this boy in my arms. I told him I loved him and that everything would be okay. He hugged me back. He was unwell, but alive. I'm crushed. What did I do wrong? What could I have done differently to make it okay? to keep him here with me. <laughs> I shouldn't have told him I loved him. It was true, but it wasn't what he needed. God, he even told me how much it hurt for people to care about him. Why? Why did I do it? Why was I so... so weak and selfish? My swarming thoughts buzzed deafeningly in my head, making me feel worse by telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with him, walked with him every day, let him know I cared more often, and remained friends with him like we always have been, he'd still be here. I know he'd still be here. I don't care about the literature club. To hell with that! festival. I've just lost the most important person in my life. He's gone. Nothing I can do will bring him back. I'm sorry. I only had one chance at it, and I was careless. No! I'll carry this guilt with me forever. So 
themselves. And I deserve it. Nothing, nothing in my life is worth losing him, but I still couldn't do what he needed me to do. And now, I can never take it back. I see an annoying towards me. That is so